Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus certification training course on installing and configuring memory. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from our 22702 exam, section 1.1. That's our practical application exam where we need to know how to install, configure, and maintain components like memory. We're going to focus on memory in this particular video. The first thing we need to think about before we actually begin the installation of the memory is what we need to do before we get to that point. We need to understand first the exact type of memory that we need. Your motherboard and the type of memory on it are very, very closely linked. You don't want to simply find a random piece of memory module that happens to fit into the slot and hope that it's going to work. 99 times out of 100, it absolutely is not. You want to check your motherboard information, grab the documentation, look on the motherboard website, and make sure you know exactly the specifications that are required for the motherboard so that you're able to buy the exact right type of memory. Sometimes you can get other help too on Crucial.com, which is a great website for buying memory. They have a wizard that's online where you simply type in the motherboard model or the model of your particular computer, and it will give you the options of memory that it believes is compatible with the motherboard you happen to have. So a couple of places you can go to make sure that you're getting exactly the right memory for the motherboard that you have. Here's a really good example of this. And there's a lot of text on this slide, and it's for a good reason. You need to make sure that the memory requirements are very, very specific, and they match perfectly for what we're trying to do. If I have my Dell computer here and I go to my manual, it tells me that this laptop that I have has two uh, user accessible connectors. They're on the back of my computer. I can remove something, my laptop. I can remove a panel and get to them. I can use 256 megabyte memory modules, 512 megabyte, one gigabyte, and two gigabyte modules. It tells me the memory type and the speeds that I'm using, the minimum memory, the maximum memory. And it even tells me that if I would like to obtain dual channel bandwidth capability, I should use both memory slots. It's going to work twice as fast at moving that memory instead of just using a single memory module. So I went to Crucial.com and I typed in my Dell model. And it said, well, you can use a DDR2 PC2 5300, the latency of CL5, unbuffered, non-ECC memory, or DDR2 667. That's the speed of the memory. Uh, voltage is 1.8 volts. And it's 256 megabytes by 64. I also have this one, and it's a latency of CL6. It's a faster memory, though. You could see that. It's a DDR2-800. Mine only needs up to 667. But either of these will work on my computer. And I can make a decision then on if I want to just use the memory that I've got. If I'm upgrading later to a machine that might want to be able to use this memory, maybe I'd consider getting the faster memory now. Even though it's not really going to run at that speed, it will only run at that front side bus speed of 667 megahertz. So now I have some options of what I can buy, and I can acquire the memory that's appropriate for my motherboard. Well, I already have memory inside of my computer. So why don't I just open the back of my computer and look at that memory? Well, you might have something like this in your computer, and it doesn't actually tell you what type of memory this is. The numbers that are on here may be specific to this individual chip and not the memory module itself. I don't know what real speed this runs at for this memory module. I don't even know what type of memory module this is. I don't know the latency settings for this module or what it can support as far as its front side bus. So perhaps not the best thing to use to try to figure out what's there. You could always look at the existing RAM settings in the BIOS and see how much memory is in my computer. Oh, it's 2 gig, and I have two modules. I can at least assume maybe that these, these two modules are 1 gig modules then. So I might want to consider getting an upgrade and just replacing those with 2 gig modules. But you should always, always go back to your motherboard documentation. Don't simply look at the memory inside and think you got it. You should always make sure you're using the right type, or else you'll be installing memory that quite simply isn't going to work properly in your computer. If you're still not sure and you want to confirm the memory that's in your computer is really what your motherboard says it is, every single memory module has a little chip on it called the Serial Presence Detect Chip. It's this tiny little chip that you'll see next to every single memory module. That was added to these memory modules so that you could query it with software. This is the CPU-Z program that you can get from uh, their website. Just uh, do a Google search for CPU-Z. It's a free utility. And you can go right to your SPD connection here for Serial Presence 
presence detect and see what does the SPD say that this memory module is. Well, in slot one is a DDR2. It's a one gig memory module. It's a PC2-5300. Here's the manufacturer. Here's the part number. Here's the serial number of this. It does not support correction and the frequencies and timings that it's getting out of that memory module. So there is a very, very nice way to get an extensive amount of information on what might already be installed inside of a computer so that you can then make some assumptions about what type of memory you may need later. That way you don't even have to take the cover off of the computer. You already know exactly what's installed into every memory slot inside of your system. Now we've got the memory. Now we're ready to install it into our motherboard. Before we begin, let's make sure that we're transporting this properly. Make sure that our memory is in an anti-static bag. Make sure you're using the proper amount of wrist straps or that you're grounding yourself properly, especially in environments where there's a lot of electrostatic discharge. Your memory modules are extremely sensitive to electrostatic discharge. You want to be sure that you're carrying it and handling it when you take it out of the bag at its edges. Don't ever touch those memory chips directly. Don't ever touch any component it directly. Always use the edge of those particular memory modules to be able to install it into the computer. So here are memory modules on my motherboard. These are actually installed at an angle. Your motherboard may be straight up and down. It depends on the model. And they have not only these uh, connections on here, there are these different connectors, these channels that are in here, these notches. And I can only install my memory on a certain way. I can't flip them around the wrong way and install them. They simply won't go in because you've got these little notches that won't allow that. Once you put it in all the way, it should simply slide very easily without having to force it quite a bit. If you're forcing your memory, you're putting it in the wrong way. Once you put it in, you should be able to close these connectors on the side that lock the memory into place. And those should also uh, connect in very, very easily. There shouldn't be a lot of pressure. So we'll get the memory, again, holding it by the edges. And we'll simply slide it right into those channels, making sure that the notches on the memory are lined up with the notches that are on the memory module connectors on the motherboard. Once we slide it in, you can see that occasionally when you push it all the way in, the, these side connectors will even begin to close themselves and lock right into the notches that are on the side. And once they're locked in, you may want to push them, make sure they're in there just right. That memory is not going to fall out of there very easily. It really is locked in quite nicely. To remove the memory, we would push down on those side locks, and the memory would then be pushed out of the module itself. Once we have it here, it should look something like this, where it's in there completely. We don't see any of the connectors or any of that copper coming up. We also don't see uh, that these are out in any way. They are completely flush and connected and locked in to the memory modules that we have there. To double check the memory that we have in place, once we have it installed, we can add the power back to our computer, boot up our system, and look in the BIOS and see how much memory does it say is inside of this computer. Does it show 1 gig? Does it show 2 gig? Does it show 4 gig? You want to be sure that the amount of memory you've installed matches what your BIOS is seeing. Because if your BIOS does not see the memory, it's not going to be able to use the memory in the operating system. So that's one place to check. You might also want to get your operating system booted up and start up something like Windows Task Manager, because it's going to show you the exact total physical memory that's inside of your computer. And you'll be able to confirm, did I really upgrade to 2 gig, or is it still running at a different value? How much is the the operating system really seeing, that's a great place to go. Let's see what we've learned about installing and configuring memory. Our first question is, what is the definitive source of memory specification details for your computer? There's really only one place that can give you exactly the type of memory requirements you'll need, and that is your motherboard documentation. Our next question, what chip on the memory module provides performance and detailed configuration information to the computer? You saw there was that tiny little chip, and that was the SPD, the Serial Presence Detect chip. And lastly, what two methods should you use to confirm the memory that's now available inside of your computer? We saw those two. We could look in our BIOS to make sure that the computer itself is seeing it. And then also look in your operating system and make sure that your OS is able to see all of the memory that you've now got installed inside of your computer. Well, that covers what we needed to know for our 220.702 Section 1.1 on installing, configuring our memory modules inside of our computers. We have a lot more absolutely free a videos on our website. There's message boards and much more. Come visit us at freeaplus.com.